now, uh, Richard, uh, can you uh, can you hear me and um, can you give us the latest information uh, that you know? Uh, we just heard your report. It shows that this company in Marsat, the company that revealed how long that flight may have been in the air, what are they saying now? Well, since uh, I submitted that report, the engineers at Enmarsat have had time to analyze the uh, pings, they call them, the uh, messages that came from the aircraft. Now, in that report, it was made clear that what they could do was identify uh, that the plane had continued flying five hours after the original time we thought it had dropped off the uh, radar. But they couldn't be precise, precisely accurate about where it had gone. So what they've spent their time doing is analyzing um, the signals that come from other Malaysia Airline 777 planes. Uh, and uh, using uh, analyzing, as hasn't been done before, this is a first, what they call the Doppler effect, uh, and that is the change in frequency due to the movement of the satellite, they finally came up with what was, or what is now, a much more precise location. They have demonstrated, uh, they say uh, confidently, but they, when they say confidently, they add they have no pleasure in saying confidently that the plane went down in the South Indian Ocean on the Southern Pass. And it's that new information that the Malaysian uh, Prime Minister Abdel Razak has taken to say that he believes firmly now and very sadly uh, that uh, the, there was no possibility that there was a landing spot nearby with this new information from Inmarsat. The Malaysian government has concluded that the plane went down in that area. Of course, uh, going down in that area raises almost as many questions uh, as it gives us answers. Um, but uh, the situation at the moment is that there is now probably, according to the Malaysian government, no hope for MH370. Yeah, that's what the Prime Minister had mentioned. Uh, Richard, uh, this is new technology, is that right, never used before? What it is, it's much more a new system of analyzing um, the information that was coming out of the plane, and in large part um, because they didn't need it before. So what they, what they did was when they identified that they had this signal, they then took a look at the signals from all other Malaysia Airline 777 planes and compared them. Uh, and then with that information, they could get a very clear idea of the, uh, the changes in the, in, the, in the signals that were coming. And using that new information, using that uh, new model that they created specifically for this analysis, they were able to home in on the uh, southern reaches of the Indian Ocean, the southern pass. And that is what has given us this uh, breakthrough information on the, uh, on the last moments. And, of course, it has to be uh, the last moments of uh, MH370. And, of course, it has to be said that we are still dealing with a vast area. Uh, there is, though, coincidentally, perhaps the identification of some of debris floating in the sea, uh, two, at least two floating objects, um, and they could be recovered within 24 hours. That, then, would give us a, a precise pinpoint the latest information for Inmarsat is that they have identified the area more exactly. Uh, quite how easy it would be to get access to MH370 once the final, uh, once the crash site has been found is another question entirely.